Today actually marks one week until my birthday, my birthday week. So I thought, what better way to celebrate turning 30 than by stress sewing my way through the week so that I have a new handmade outfit to wear on the weekend. So the dress of choice for this project is a red Zimmerman silk wrap dress. It's not my first time making this dress. I've actually made it twice before. The first time was late last year when I purchased a really beautiful silk and I decided to make this dress in two days for a wedding that I attended. It turned out really well, I really liked it, but the fit just wasn't quite right and the silk was just punished to work with. It's really expensive, it pulls really easily, it's delicate to work with. It was just a bit of a nightmare. So when I remade the dress a few months ago, which I actually wore two nights ago to a work event, I remade it in satin instead. And this helped to bring the cost down. It wasn't as delicate to work with and much less stressful. I also remade the pattern when I made the dress in the blue silk and it fits so much better. It was absolutely perfect. And for once in my life, I actually kept the pattern. So that's gonna work to my advantage. I also bought the fabric that I would need for this project a few months ago because I liked that satin so much that I wanted to buy it in red to prep for this project. Not knowing that I would wanna make it now or week before my birthday, but I digress. So I've already got the pattern. I've already got the fabric. There's a few bits and pieces that I'll need to pick up along the way. I'll take you with me, of course. But we don't have much time. My birthday's in less than a week. So let's get into it. As I mentioned already, I had this fabric in my stash, so it was good to use up a fabric that I already had at home. I feel like I've been buying a lot of fabric lately, so it was really good not to have to buy something for this project and just use what I already had. There was only two other items that I needed. One of them was bias binding, and I used that to cover the seam where the sleeve is attached to the bodice. I took a sample of the fabric to Spotlight to try and match the color as close as possible and found one that was good enough. And the last item that I needed was self-covered buttons. So this is a little kit that you can get from Spotlight. These kind of buttons allow you to use any fabric that you like, so you can make your own custom buttons. I love using these. And then of course, I already had some red Gudeman thread. This is the only thread that I use. It's the best, never breaks on me, it works really well on my machine. So all I needed to do was prep a couple of bobbins worth of thread and then I was ready to go. So again, I already had this fabric saved from the last time I made this dress, so that saved me a lot of time in pattern drafting. And the one particular item that I use on this fabric that's a little bit different is actually silk pins. I find that satin style fabrics have a tendency to snag a little bit, so using silk pins just reduces that risk. So here I've just pinned half of the pattern to the fabric and I'm cutting it out. And then for the sleeves, I couldn't find the exact pattern that I used, so I just used an old one that I had and I altered the top of it so that the sleeve cap was a little bit higher, meaning that I had a little bit more fabric near my shoulder. And then here I'm actually making some cuffs without a pattern, so I'm just going straight onto the fabric here. And also cutting out some interfacing for the cuffs, and this will give them lots of structure. For the construction of this garment, I obviously have not lined this dress. So what I like to do in this case is do what's called a French seam. So a French seam is a lot of work. <laughs> Essentially, you're sewing everything twice and you're ironing everything twice. So you sew a standard seam, but you have the wrong sides of your fabric facing together. It's usually the opposite. Then you have to trim the excess fabric, open it up, iron it so that it's nice and flat, fold it up, iron it closed, and then sew it again with another seam allowance. This is really great for thin fabrics or fabrics that aren't lined, because what happens is you get this really clean seam on the inside and you don't have any raw fabric or fraying edges. Usually if you sew a standard seam, you have unfinished raw fabric, so you have to somehow finish the seam, either using a serger, doing a French seam or some other seam method. 
So it's a lot of work when you're using French seams on garments because you're essentially doing everything twice, but it's worth it because it looks so clean. So here I'm just getting started on the sleeve cuffs. I really like making them. I really don't know why it's me. Maybe it's just because they're rectangles and they're really easy. I then made a really quick little sleeve placket for my sleeves and I started to attach my cuffs to my sleeves. This again, it's a bit of a process, but for some reason I really enjoy it. I had to gather the sleeves into the cuff so it fits really well. And then I use a stitch in the ditch method to make it all seamless so that you can't see any stitches. Then I went ahead and changed the settings on my machine so that I could sew buttonholes and I changed my machine foot to a buttonhole foot. And this allows me to make buttonholes on my machine, which is so fun. It's so satisfying when they come out perfect. They don't always come out perfect, but you know, you cross your fingers with each buttonhole. Here I'm just trying on the upper bodice. It's obviously not finished, but it's giving me a little bit of an idea of how it's gonna look when it's done. But you can see here the next thing that I need to add is our collar. The collar is super long and super wide, and this is one of the really standout features of the dress. It's a bit fiddly because you wanna sew it as seamless as possible so that you can't see any stitching, but when it's done really well, it looks great. So again, I'm using that stitch in the ditch method to make sure that everything's invisible. I thought it would be best to add my label onto the garment now before everything was in the way. I just find it a little bit easier so that I'm not accidentally ironing creases into the dress. So I got that out of the way early. It's the first time I've done that in the middle of the project. I know. And then I moved on to making buttons. So again, I'm using that self cover button kit. It's got all of the instructions on it and they turn out so cute. They're little shank buttons. So it means that they've got a little stem on the bottom and you just sew them onto the sleeve or whatever part of the garment you need them on. You can see here how cute they look on the cuff. I'm obsessed, they are so cute. So on the second day of construction, there wasn't much left to do. It was pretty quick, to be honest. I just needed to make a circle skirt. You can see I'm doing it on the floor <laughs> and I probably should have ironed the fabric before I cut this out, but it doesn't matter. But a circle skirt just allows you to have a little bit more volume on the lower end of the skirt. So it's a little bit more flowy than a straight skirt. I didn't film this next part, but I also did cut out a small waistband and enough fabric to make a belt. That's a bit boring though, so I didn't film that. And then all that was left to do was French seam those skirt pieces to the upper bodice, make the belt and attach the belt loops. And the final touch is hemming the bottom of the dress. This is my dress, all finished in two days. Thank God, just in time for my birthday. I ended up wearing this dress last night to a dinner with my family as an early birthday celebration, the day before my birthday. It was a really easy project because again, I already had saved the pattern that I had used the last time I made this dress. I already had the fabric, so I knew that I could get it sorted really quickly. But I am glad that I took on the challenge of making something the week of my birthday to wear because it's always nice to go out and have something new to wear, right? And as you know, I prefer the challenge of just sewing something myself. Again, a lot of the dresses that I recreate are not gonna be absolutely identical to the original, but I feel like this is pretty close. And again, a fraction of the cost compared to the original. As soon as I finish a project and I pack everything away, I really wanna pull it back out again to start something new. So I've got some ideas of what I wanna make next. I'm not 100% sure yet. I do need to do a little bit of planning before I get started. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process of me making this very quick birthday dress. I'll see you in the next video.